When Marnie Was There is the latest and quite possibly last film from Studio Ghibli, the renowned Japanese animation house that over the years has brought us quite possibly some of the best animated films of all time, including Spirited Away, my personal favourite, and a film which is not only one of my favourite animated films, but one of my favourite films in general. First off, I have to say that When Money Was There isn't as good as Say A Spirited Away, but it is still a great film and ranks up there with some of Studio Ghibli's best work to date. In terms of the story, it's what you'd expect from a typical Studio Ghibli film. It revolves around a little girl who's quite, you know, emotionally closed and quite distant and trying to find her place in the world. She finds herself whisked off to this newfound location. And whilst in this new place, she stumbles across this mysterious mansion in the marsh, which she finds herself magnetically drawn to. And this girl that appears in the window, who she seems mesmerised by, and who really, really wants to find out more about her, that young girl in the window being Marnie. And Anna's just desperate to find out what this mansion is and who this girl is and the story revolves all around that basically. First off we're going to start with positives. When Money Was There was such a beautiful film and not just visually, thematically as well. One of the best things about this film and about all the Studio Ghibli films is that they deal with very mature and grown up themes and issues. So many animated films nowadays and I love the mainstream American animated films. I mean I love Disney, Pixar, I grew up with the Disney films of the, the days of the classic Disney and I just loved Pixar films, that's one of my favourite films of all time as well but the great thing about the Studio Ghibli films is that they don't pander to the kids, they don't dumb it down, they don't make stupid kiddie films. I mean they're primarily targeted for a younger audience yes but They've got very serious and, you know, realistic themes and issues that are interwoven into the plot, which I really like and really appreciate because it not only makes a better film for a kid, where a kid's able to watch this film and be entertained, but they've also got these other kind of deeper, kind of more kind of serious themes and issues that are there as well for them to pick up on. But it's also got that there for the adults to really enjoy as well. The whole, the whole deeper underlying kind of themes and messages there for the adults to appreciate as well. And that's one of the best things about this film. Um, one of the things I like most about Studio Ghibli's films in general is that they're not stupid kiddie films. You can, you can watch them as an adult and really enjoy them because they've got these very mature and grown up themes and issues there that resonate with you and you can relate to. So even though it's a, a Japanese animated film primarily for kids, you can sit there as an adult and really relate to it and really connect with it and I really like that. In the screening I went to see when Marnie was there, it was pretty much all adults. There was one boy there of his dad but the rest of us were all adults and that was so, so, so great I and mean, you wouldn't get that with any other animated film. I mean as great as the Disney and Pixar films are, they're really for kids, you know, and you go to see them and it's primarily kids, the audience, and yet you go to see a Studio Ghibli film and it's primarily adults, and I just love that. Because yes, they are technically for kids, but adults can enjoy them just as much, maybe even more so. Honestly, I'm not exaggerating this. It's probably one of the most mature and complex films that I've seen all year. It was, it was that good. To give an example, some of the themes that are explored in this, the main character revolves around... Anna, she's like kind of, she's kind of very kind of emotionally distant, she's quite closed, she doesn't like letting her emotions out, she's kind of got social anxiety kind of thing, she doesn't like being around other people, she likes just keeping herself to herself and being on her own. And there's even kind of themes of like, you know, LGBT themes kind of there, interwoven subtly as well, which people might not pick up on. It's kind of hinted at in a few scenes and a few moments. But yeah, I just you wouldn't get any, things like that in any other animated film. That's what I like so much about this film and about Shiro Ghibli's films that you can get, you know, themes and issues as you know serious and as you know realistic and as topical as them, and that they're able to interwove them into an animated kids film. And I just really like how they did that and how they, you know, because I never thought I'd be able to connect with this film as much as I did. I was really able to connect with the main character and relate to the main character and it really kind of resonated with me on a deeper emotional level. And the fact that a Japanese animated film for kids was able to do that, I think it just deserves to be applauded. In terms of the story as well, I really liked the story. It was a very kind of complex and mysterious story that kept me interested and engaged throughout. I was constantly trying to put the pieces together and try to solve the mystery I and mean, people might be put off by that, but I, I really like that because I like films where the story is more complex. It's not like spoon feeding it to you. It's a little bit more kind of, 
you know, mysterious and it's not, it's a little bit more ambiguous and you have to like kind of put the pieces together yourself and try to figure out what's going on. And that didn't put me off. That, that made me like the film even more so because it wasn't just a dumb, generic story. It was a very kind of complex and mysterious story. You know, it was like a mystery, um, like a mystery drama, if you will. And it was great kind of and to figure out what was going on, try to put the pieces together. And yeah, I really liked that. And it was really fun to watch in that way because it got, it, it forced you to pay attention. You had to keep, keep watching and keep trying to, you know, figure out what was going on. And I really liked that. And I thought it worked really well. In fact, I was so immersed and engrossed in the film that I repeatedly kept surprising myself at how many times I just found myself just sitting there staring at the screen with just like this jaw dropped expression. Like I was just, in such awe and wonder at this film and it, it's one of those films you watch and you just you get so engrossed into the film and so invested that you just f kind of forget where you are. I was so immersed into the world of the film and so invested in the story that I just kept forgetting about eating my popcorn. I was like usually I'm just there like eating a popcorn all the time and you know, you know a film where it's, when it's not that good I just don't really care about the film just focusing on eating the popcorn and you know I, I'm enjoying the popcorn even if I'm not enjoying the film but with this I was so engrossed into the film and so immersed and engaged with what was going on I just kept forgetting about my popcorn I was just sitting there like and I was like oh yeah but I kept, I kept forgetting that I had my bloody popcorn there I was so and so like invested in this film really you know on, on edge of what was going to happen next and that was I think is a really big positive because most of the time I'm just you know not that immersed and engrossed into the film and just I'm just sitting there eating my popcorn and in this film it had me so hooked and I was so involved in the film that I just kept forgetting about eating my popcorn so yeah, that's another big positive I can give this film. In terms of the genre of the film it's kind of like a cross between an epic sweeping romance and a mystery drama which I really liked as well because they're kind of two genres that you don't really get that often nowadays the big epic sweeping romance films and the mystery dramas as well and it was really cool seeing those two blended together into an animated film and it was done really well and yeah I, I really like that because it made the film even more interesting and enjoyable to watch. Also stylistically and aesthetically it was also kind of very similar to other kind of mystery films such as The Woman in Black which you know also revolved around uh, an old mansion in the marsh and yeah so in those kind of moments and those kind of shots it was very reminiscent of like I say a woman in black. It also surprisingly seemed quite Hitchcockian towards the end and it went in the big kind of dramatic climax it got quite you know thrilling and it became almost like a Hitchcock thriller you know there was even a couple of shots that were like straight out of vertigo and it was that was really cool to see as well because I love watching an animated film when it's like it's not just a fun film for kids but it's like a serious work of art as well it's like you know how it's kind of like referencing other films and paying homage to other films and it's kind of like visual kind of callbacks and similarities to other films and I really liked that and really appreciated that and also another thing I really liked was it had a very mystical magical feel to it Marnie the character she's kind of quite a kind of mystical magical presence you don't know whether she's real whether she's a ghost whether she's like just imaginary and the way they play it in this song it could have got repetitive and boring and tiring just doing the same thing over and over again but they did it in different ways each time you know in, in a way that you know it wasn't predictable it wasn't formulaic you, you didn't predict where it was going to go it constantly kept you on the edge of the seat and kept you guessing as to what was going on one minute you think she was real next minute you think she's imaginary and the next minute you think oh it's just it's just a dream or oh maybe she could be a ghost maybe she is real and it, kept, it constantly kept you guessing and kept you thinking as well it's very thought-provoking and very stimulating to watch you know it wasn't just a film where you could just sit back and just you know you know you had to pay attention you have to you had it forced you to become involved with the film and trying to figure out what's going on and I really like that and visually of course this film was just stunning to look at it's just gorgeous to behold just beautiful hand-drawn animation it's just like watching a work of art on the screen is that good and it's what I love so much about the Studio Ghibli films and the kind of Disney films from the classic Disney days I just love hand-drawn animation it just really kind of sucks you into the world of the film it feels so kind of real and tangible and you're really able to kind of connect with the film and it feels like you're a part of it. I love the look of modern animated films but there's just something about hand-drawn animation which is just really special and nostalgic for me and I just absolutely love it. It was very reminiscent of like the films of like the classic Disney days and I just love that. When you go and see just a stereotypical generic animated film that's you know not that good it's just like watching something that was just 
very cheaply and lazily just churn it out with this. It's like you're watching a work of art. It really is. It's like, it's not just an animated film. It's not just cartoon fun for kids. It's like watching just this, this masterful artistic piece of cinema. And I just absolutely love that. And it's just so great. I'm going on to negatives now. I do have a couple of little negative points. Nothing major. Just a few little minor nitpicks really here and there. As far as the story goes, oh, I really like the whole complex and mysterious story, but it did get a little too convoluted for its own good at a certain few points. For instance, as you're watching the film, you're figuring out what's going on, and there's a couple of instances where it kind of gets a little irritating. You're like, wait, hang on a minute, that doesn't add up, but that doesn't make sense. And it bugged me a little bit, and it got a little irritating. But saying that, by the time the film wrapped up, it came to a conclusion, and the mystery was resolved, and the answers were revealed, it all came together and it all made sense and I was like, oh, okay, oh, oh my god, oh, sorry, oh, you, you had me thinking that was, you know, but okay, you did it, okay, it makes sense. So, not really a negative point really, it just, it bugged me a little bit, but then by the time the film came to an end, it all made sense, so, you know. Finally, the dubbing sometimes did get a little distracting for me. I did want to see this in the original Japanese version, because I do prefer watching it in the original version and just having the subtitles there, but I thought, I would just go and see it in a dub version because the Studio Ghibli films are so kind of well known and respected across the world now that they get really good talent in to do the voice acting. So I thought I'll just see the dub version, and it was dubbed well. You know, it wasn't it wasn't badly dubbed. The voice acting was good as well, but sometimes it did get a little distracting because I was just I kept kept thinking, oh, what would this sound in the like, like an initial Japanese version? I mean, like I don't speak Japanese. But I was thinking, what were the original actors have delivered these lines like? And are these American actors delivering the lines in the same way? Or are they doing something different? And it just bugged me in that way and got a little distracting. But again, this was just kind of me being a little bit nitpicky. So overall, When Marnie Was There may not be Studio Ghibli's finest film, but it definitely ranks up there as one of their best. And if this does prove to be their last venture, then it was a great swan song. With deeply human and relatable characters, a mysterious and engaging story, and rich with gorgeously stunning visuals. When Marnie Was There is a beautiful, poignant, heartfelt film and an extremely touching farewell from what will surely go down as one of the best animation houses of all time. I'm going to give When Marnie Was There five stars. It was just one of the most beautiful films I've seen in a long time. I urge you, if you live in the UK, please go out and support When Marnie Was There. It came out a while ago in the US, I think it came out this time last year, I think in the US, but it's only just come out in the UK. So if you live in the UK, I urge you, please go out and support When Marnie Was There, because it really deserves to be supported, and these are the kind of animated films that should continue to be made. So there we go, that wraps up my review for When Marnie Was There. What do you think about the film? Let me know down below, I'd love to know. But for now, I've been David O'Sullivan. I'll see you next time.